Now, let's look at the hadith. The hadith says six, and let's look at the hadith nine, okay? Right. Yeah. What do the hadith, just for the record, because there's lots of people in, what do the hadith say, Al Bukhari? The, the hadith says six, yep. marriage, nine consummated. Right. However, so you're saying they're wrong? The scholars weakened that hadith because the narrator lived in Iraq. And it's it's in Sahih Al Bukhari. Yes, I know, but. Are you saying it's not Sahih anymore? It's been weakened. Is it Sahih? I don't know. It but is that, Sahih. Another point I want to make as well is. Wait, 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 no, no. Okay. We're talking about a Sahih hadith. And I want to have a conversation, not a shouting match. So yeah, I do want to. Okay. I want to give you plenty of time to yeah. talk. But let me just lay out my case. Your own hadith say that it is sah in Sahih, Sahih Al Bukhari. Yeah. That, as you've said, and as I know, that Aisha was six at the consummation and nine at the marriage. Now, what you're saying is now, in the 21st century, Muslims are weakening that Sahih Hadith. Is that your argument? Some are doing that. Others are saying that at that time, they used to count age after puberty. So let's say you hit puberty at 13 and it became 19. That means you're six years old. Okay. So this is another view that scholars have. Did Muslims say that before the modern period? This is what I've heard recent scholars say now. I don't know about scholars from before. I, I can't speak about classical scholars because I don't know. But the scholars now say that in those times they would also count age after puberty. Yeah. So, for example, I hit puberty at let's say 15. Yeah. That means I'm 10 years old. Can I can I just say to you that I think that what you you've been hoodwinked, bro, by a bunch of lies. But I've got more points to make. Wait, wait, wait. But let me just address those points. Okay. The reason why I'm saying you're being hoodwinked by a bunch of lies is for two reasons principally. Firstly, this argument that you're making is a very modern one and it is in response to the very powerful criticism that you've just heard today. That the example of your prophet, if those hadiths are true, is that it makes your prophet a paedophile. Right, now just as a question before I make point two. If those hadiths are true, that they are really, that she was actually six as we understand it, and actually nine as we understand it, would you agree with me that that does make Muhammad a paedophile? See, I can't ask that question. Why? Because it's like me saying, imagine in Christianity it says to kill everyone. Would that, does that mean you accept it? That kind of is a trap question, so I'm not going to ask that question. No, it's not a trap question. It's, it's a genuine question. question. No, it's a legitimate I'm gonna, I'm question. Not, I'm not going to ask that question. Okay, so you I don't want to condemn your prophet? I refuse to answer that question. Okay, he's, no, he's refusing to condemn no, his prophet. No, I refuse to answer the question. Okay. Don't put words on that. Now, next point I want to make is... Wait, I've got point two. Can I, can I make the next no, point? No, no, no. Okay, I'll let you make a point, then I'll make a point. Go on. Now, another reason why... Aisha was not six and nine. you step away to somewhere a little quieter? It's not that loud. Then no, let's go into yeah, that yeah, then will come. No, no, it's fine. We'll have a quieter cut away from all the shouting people. But then they're going to shout there as no, well. No, no, me and you are conversation in here. That round of shouting is over. Yeah. So shouting. What's your name, bro? What's her name? Borak. Borak, nice yeah, name. Where's that from? Borak. 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 No Borak, no, thank you. No Borak. Uh, right. No that's that's better. Okay. Yes. Go on. You're so going to make the point. Ne next point as well is through the age of her sister Esma. Yeah. She was 10 years older than Aisha. Yeah. And by using events of Esma's lifetime, they calculate that um, Aisha can't have been six or nine. Yeah. She was uh, 16, 18, 21, around those ages. Yeah. So cal using calculation, it's impossible for her to be six or nine using the events of her sister. Can I reply? Oh, yeah, before, you reply before you reply. Oh, we're just going to change the batteries. Action. Okay. okay. So the, 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 the second point that I would make, the second point that I would make is that these, these new apologetics that are emerging from within the Muslim community, right? They're doing it because they feel the sting of the criticism that we Christians have made. So, uh, he, and that was demonstrated even by you when you couldn't answer a very simple question. I refuse to answer. Yeah, exactly. You, you refuse to answer a very simple question. And, and that shows that you feel the sting of the criticism. But the, the reason why they... The, the, but the thing that they do when they make that apologetic is that they cast Sahih al-Bukhari into doubt. Because what they're saying is Sahih al-Bukhari isn't reliable, that he got his Sahih collection wrong, that this hadith is not Sahih, and then the question arises, what other hadith are not sahih? What we've got is a convoluted argument made by a Muslim apologist on one side, and the very clear written hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari that Bukhari says is sahih. Now, all the Muslims in this park, and this is where I'm landing to let you reply, all the Muslims that I've debated in this park, and I've done it for six years, None of them have made your argument, except maybe one other person in six years. All the big figures, you know, 
are in, instead attempting to justify, like that woman did, when she said she wouldn't condemn paedophilia and she would agree with child marriage. All of them are instead defending Mohammed's paedophilia. Okay, now my point that I want to make is the reason why we, you say we are apol uh, apologists is because before this issue didn't come uh, about, you know, yeah. people were making this issue. Yeah. Now because it's become an issue, we need to clarify yes. that makes sense. So then now, a lot of things have changed in the 21st century. Yes. You know, you've got, you know, homosexuality, transsexuality. We know about childhood development. Uh, cigarettes. We know about childhood development. What development? We know about childhood development. Childhood development. Yeah. We, know, we know more stuff. Cryptocurrency, all these kind of things, yeah. all new things. So these kind of stuff need to be clarified now. Okay? Yes. Scholars, they need to clarify it before because it was made an issue. Because the people who are against the prophet, peace be upon him, they use any excuse to slander him. He's a magician, yeah. all this kind of stuff. But never yeah. they never said he's a paedophile. Why? Yeah. Why did they not use the argument that he's a paedophile? That means he wasn't a paedophile. Otherwise, they would have used it against no, him. No, hold on one second. You're, you're totally wrong. Because the, con the understanding that paedophilia exists is something that's only modern. In the past, Christians themselves used to marry children because they didn't understand about childhood development. Right. And this is one of the reasons why Christianity is superior to Islam. And it's one of the reasons that I would invite you to reject that paedophile Muhammad and embrace the teachings of the apostles because in our religion, we're told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, which means that as new issues come to our understanding, like for instance, the understanding of childhood development, we then think, what does our faith mean given this new information? And that's why Christians, even at the fifth century, had raised the age at which children could consent. So that's two centuries before Islam. And all the way through Christian history, we have been raising the age of consent. And everywhere around the world, people are rage it, rage it, uh, raising the age of consent. But as a Muslim, you're committed to the example of Muhammad because he is the perfect human being. Which means that you have two options when you're confronted with a Sahih Hadith about him marrying a six-year-old and having sex with a nine-year-old, which according to that Hadith he was. According to the commentary. Can we, no, no, a modern commentary, not past commentary. Yeah, but it wasn't made an issue before, so now people, so now the scholars. So now the scholars are rewriting the tradition. Rewriting. They're rewriting the they're tradition. They're not rewriting, they're re, uh, researching the yeah. sources because they have to clarify it. Yeah. And another point that I want to make as well is in Islam, we don't need to give an age of consent because that's uh, what's subjective. So, for example, in Japan is a different age, America's a different age, here's a different age. Yeah. Okay, so for example, in, in America, it's 18, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, here it's in 16. Most, in most so states. It, here, if a 16 year old has sex, that's pedophilia, according to the Americans. Yeah. But it's not for us. In Islam, it says mental maturity and physical maturity, whether that's at 15, 18, 20, 21. A six year old is never mentally exactly, mature. Exactly, which is why she There you go. Six. Did you hear that? Exactly. Which so, in his heart, he is condemning Muhammad. Yeah, but, no, but he never married a six year old, so I'm not agreeing that. You, you've got no evidence that I just he didn't. The evidence. You've got an argument, yeah, an argument based on a convoluted uh, massaging of the text. Now, let me just say something. In terms of Islamic history, right, for those of us that bother to study it, what we know about the Hadith collections and about Hadith sciences is that they are consistently massaged and, and adapted from age to age. So when the Abbasids overthrew the Umayyads, there was an explosion, a plethora, of, of creating hadiths to support one position over another. In, it went between the Shia and the Sunni, a plethora of hadiths to back one position over other. In, in terms of what hadiths are considered sahih and not sahih, we can see that the early Muslims rejected the traditions about what happened to Muhammad's body after death because of Christian criticisms about those traditions and they were de de subjected as being unreliable, right? And that's what Muslims are doing today. Because of Christian criticisms, they are trying to now downplay a very clear hadith that says Muhammad married a six-year-old and had sex with a nine-year-old. And they're trying to downplay it, even though for 1400 years it's been sahih, they're now trying to say it wasn't, just like in the seventh century. Well, need to clarify back then. Just like in the seventh century, Christians criticized the, the, what, the early traditions of what happened to Muhammad's body, because it was eaten by a dog and it became bloated and they left it in a house for three days. Those are all sort of pushed down to the bottom of the Hadith reliability chain because they felt the criticism of the early Christians in the seventh century.
you know. So all the way through Islamic history, you have this invention of hadiths and this massaging of which hadiths you bring forward to suit whichever party is trying to gain dominance within the ummah. You know that Sahih al-Bukhari wasn't even... Sahih al-Bukhari Bukhari was condemned as a deviant in his own lifetime. Do you know that? The thing is, a lot of, lot of scholars that we had before, like Ibn Taymiyyah, yeah. like Abu Hanifa, yeah. they were con condemned at the time, but later were accepted. Why? Because there was a lot of politics going on. Yes. Because we as humankind... Uh, That's exactly we, what I just we said. As, we as humankind can fall for our desires. Yeah. We can become corrupt. Yeah. So over money, over power, over women, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. So yes, the, some Muslim leaders were corrupt as well. But the scholars at those times, they were against those leaders. Hence why yeah. they were, you know, uh, slandered and thrown into prison. Okay. Yeah. Do, you get my, do, you, do you get my point? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So when you're a leader of a Muslim empire, you're more bound to be corrupted because you know you've got power. Okay, so that's why the scholars were deemed at that time maybe deviant, even though they weren't. And later on, we were just like for example, how uh, Van Gogh, for example, at his time he, was, he wasn't seen as a nice painter, and now yeah. everyone loves his painting. Well, I still think he's lousy. For example, do you get my point? That's I still point. think he's rubbish. I'm not into paintings, but yeah. I'm just, just giving you that as, that as an example. Yeah. My, my, my point to you is that, and as you've just demonstrated, there's, there's two things that when you replay this video, you're going to hear back. Yeah. One is you did condemn child marriage. Of course, which didn't exist in our religion. Do, do you condemn child marriage? Of course. Which... Do you condemn paedophilia? Of course. What is paedophilia? Paedophilia is marrying uh, a, a person who has not reached a mental or physical maturity. Okay, right. And we both agree six-year-olds don't have mental maturity. 99% of the time, yes. Uh, do, and and that the nine-year-olds don't have physical maturity? Probably not. Can I just say it's 100% of the time? It's not 99.9%? It's 100% of the time. Human beings are exactly the same today as they were 1400 years ago. It is a total myth amongst Muslims that people mature differently in hot countries. It's total rubbish. It's an absolute lie. Maturity can also depend is on society. So, for example, in let's say Syria, you've got six-year-old kids yeah. looking after whole families, whereas say a six-year-old kid won't even have to go toilet properly. Right. Hold on. So, so mental maturity depends upon brain function. Brain function depends upon actual brain matter. And frontal lobe, the frontal lobe is responsible for your moral judgments. These don't mature until well into puberty. So, in other words. If you haven't had puberty, you don't have the frontal lobes for moral decisions. Secondly, secondly. So that means Aisha could never be mature enough, never be mature enough to consent to marriage at six, assuming that she was six. Right, which is what your, your, your apologists claim, but your hadiths say otherwise. Now, right, the other thing is, the other thing is, those frontal lobes develop late in, into mid-maturity. They're not there just because you bleed. They're there years later. You bleed first and then the frontal lobes develop. And that's why, that's why every society in the world is raising the age of consent. Because as we come to this realization, we realize that just because someone bleeds, they're not ready to breed. Right? So that's another ridiculous argument amongst Muslims. But hence why she was 18 or 19 when she was... Right. So let's come to that argument because there are consequences. For the sake of the remainder of this next part of the discussion, I am going to allow your argument. So in other words, I'm not going to keep reasserting the fact that it contradicts the hadiths. I'm going to say for the remainder of this argument that you are correct. That she was older and that this convoluted apologetics argument is correct. But I want you to think out what that means for Sahih al-Bukhari. Because what that means for Sahih al-Bukhari is that for 1400 years, Muslims have believed something as Sahih that is not Sahih. Do you agree that that is the consequence? Yeah, but the, the opinion of a lot of scholars is that it doesn't affect how Sahih the Hadith is, it's the interpretation of the Hadith that matters. Yes. Okay, so you've got some Muslims, let's say in Saudi Arabia, they interpret Hadiths more literally. Yes. Without thinking about uh, co uh, context, yeah, like metaphorical speaking, like all these kind of rhetorical advice, they don't, they don't actually uh, account for those. Whereas, for example, I follow, for example, Abu Hanifa, yeah. for fiqh, and he uses more logic, deduction, yes. metaphors, yes. When, he, when he derives ruling. Uh, what's the age of consent in the school of Abu Hanifa? I don't know. The, the, it, 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 it follows Muhammad's example in the Hadith Sahih al-Bukhari. Six. It, no, no. they don't give an age. This is what I'm trying to say, you don't give an age. But the, the, but the thing is, they don't, they don't reject that the school, the Hanifi school, don't reject this hadith. Yeah, because it was never made an issue, so they never bothered right. to clarify. But if you, if you like. follow that school of fiqh, and all the ulama in that school of fiqh are saying that 
we accept this hadith, you clearly are now contradicting that, that school as okay. well. For example, in another school, I think the Shafi school, you have to use the miswak before you pray, okay? Yeah. For example. And some might interpret, it has to be, yeah, you have to just use miswak to brush your teeth. But yeah. now, for example, the pin knife follows, because we've got the toothbrush and toothpaste, that kind of supersedes the miswak yeah. by your normal dental hygiene. Yeah. That makes sense. So yeah. we're, not, we're not rejecting the miswak, we're just giving a supersession to the miswak by using toothpaste and toothbrush. Well, this is one of my, this is one of my fundamental criticisms of Islam is that Islam, Islam is literally being invented by the scholars from generation to generation. Not necessarily. What, what, tell me what innovation is. Innovation is something that's been added to religion yeah, that, added change, to. Uh, that changes the way you worship yeah. or the way you believe. Right, so what we've got in the different schools of Salat are innovations, right? They're not innovations, they're different interpretations of the same text. Shia and Sunni don't pray in the same way. We consider Shia, most of them, to be deviant because they have a different collection of but I think it's the Hanbali school accepts the way that the Shia pray no, and, and they're like arms down the side. No. Well, in the Maliki school, it might be, it might be that, not the that Maliki, Hanbali school, it might the, be a different school, school, but one of them does. In the Maliki school, which is what you're talking about, they and do Maliki that. School, sorry. And the reason why they do that, in opinion, is because Imam Malik, because he was tortured so much, he couldn't raise his hands yeah. to pray. So that's why he prayed like this. However, you can still pray like so, this. So the Maliki, so what, what you, if that's your argument, the Maliki are, are using the Sunnah of Maliki, not the Sunnah of Muhammad. No, because they followed him in fiqh, but again, we can pray like this, we can pray like this, all accepted, because there's all hadiths on all of them, okay? None of them are wrong, Yeah. okay? It's just, it's just interpretation and it's the, yeah. it's the methodology of understanding those hadith, hence why there's little differences, but these are nuances that none of us argue about. Yeah. I'm not going to go to some, why do you pray like this and not like this, why do you pray like this? We right. don't make that an issue. But my, my point is, what, yeah. you've got, what you've got in the hadiths, particularly around Aisha, yeah. as, as what I'm trying to demonstrate to you, is that if you carefully look at the development of the hadiths in Islam, what you will see is that it is innovation upon innovation. Let me finish. Right? The, the hadiths are being created to suit the circumstances of each generation. And what hadiths are brought forward as reliable and which ones are rejected depends very much about the criticisms that Islam is sustaining at the time. So in other words, when in the 7th century Christians were, were, were mocking Muslims by saying, look, your literature says that Muhammad's body was eaten by a dog and it became bloated and you left it in a house for three days, that those, those traditions in Islam got put to the bottom of the pile. What you're doing now is a modern version of the same. What you're saying is because this Aisha hadith is embarrassing, we don't trust that it's actually Sahih. Not necessarily, like I said, it's the interpretation of the hadith that's been researched. And now we understand that using the age of her sister, Esma, she can't have been six or nine because... because why, why, example why, wait, 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 why isn't the, the hadith about Esma wrong? Because it's not, it's not wrong because there's sources on it. But there's sources there's on Aisha's lot, age. That's one hadith by a person. The same, same hadiths are in Sahih al-Muslim. Yeah, but it's, it's, but it's from the same hadith. They both used it in their compilation, but it's the same hadith. But my point is, why? Why well, you're, you're saying that the hadith about Aisha can't be trusted. No, I didn't say that. But, okay. but the, the, one about, the one about Esma can be trusted. Okay, look, uh, I'm saying, me, well, why isn't the one about okay, Esma wrong? Let me clarify again. So, you know, as you said it's in Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari. Yeah. Both of them have put the same hadith in their books, in their compilations, yeah? And in that hadith, okay, some scholars say that uh, the person who narrated it, which I can't remember her name, she yeah. moved to Iraq and there is some, uh, there is some what's it called, doubt in her uh, memory. Fact, that's what they say. Yeah. And what other scholars say as well is because of the age of Aisha's sister, who was 10 years older than her, because of her events, which have many, many hadiths, not just one, many hadiths about her sister, that's more overwhelming against, you know, the, the six year old, the age of six yeah. hadith. Okay, now the other point I was going to make, which I think I've forgotten was, um, yes, so in Islam we've got four, we've got four ways of um, again have evidence. We've got the Quran, we've got the Sunnah, which is the Hadith. Yeah, I know that. We've got Ijma, which yeah. is consensus, and then we've got Qiyas, which is comparison. That, okay. But, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what well, we use Qiyas when there's new issues like cigarettes, yes. cryptocurrency, mortgages. Yes, yes, You're yes. not going to get a Hadith that say but, mortgages. But that's is the point. This is the point. In terms of a religion that is suited to the world, this is one of the reasons why Christianity is the way to follow. Because in the Christian faith, we're not we're following a deontological sort of uh, mindset. You know what I mean by deontological? No. So deontological means we're not basing our religion and practice on rules. We're basing it on an, a virtue ethic. 
And that virtue ethic can apply whether you're an Eskimo in the North Pole, whether you're a pygmy in the Amazon, or whether you're a British banker in London, right? The problem with Islam, the one of the reasons why I reject Islam, is because you follow a system of rules, but those rules have already dated, and Muslims are having to reinvent rules. Not reinventing. To, no, they are. There is no rule about cryptocurrency exactly. that you can, exactly. So no, you're making it no. up. So what we do, we use what, what the, the original text we have yes. as a source yes. to compare whether or not it comes under, for example, usury. Yeah. It comes under gambling. Yeah. Okay. You get my point. I get what you're so saying. For example, lottery. For example, you so that's making it up. No, for example, lottery. For example, uh, the lottery doesn't appear in the Quran or in the Hadith. Yeah. Okay, because the lottery is a new thing. Yeah. But we know lottery is gambling. Why you give money to earn money? Yeah. So that comes on the same ruling as when the Quran mentions don't gamble. Yeah. Do you get my point? So yeah. that's what the comparison is. It's not inventing new. We just found out that lottery is also gambling, and gambling is. There's, a, there's a whole bunch of issues that have absolutely no uh, precedent in ancient history. So, for example, industrialization started in the 1800s, yeah. created an environmental crisis. There's no precedent in the 7th century for that. Right. Same with nuclear weapons. No precedent in the 7th century. Muslims who come up with rules about these modern precedents are making it up. It is bitter from beginning to end. No, no. So show me, show me where Muhammad talked about weapons of mass destruction. Okay, how can you expect a book this big to, to contain information, every single thing? Okay. So are you agreed that it doesn't talk about weapons of mass destruction? It won't talk about it directly, but then it will talk about other things. So, like so, so give me an example of where it talks about something like a weapon of mass destruction. Well, the Quran says, for example, is, you know, uh, to be good to other people, for example, don't kill innocent people, it's like killing all of humankind. So that it also means says that Allah hates the unbeliever and that they're uh, dumb pigs, dumb animals uh, and pigs and monkeys yeah, and, and that, that you should be hard with the unbeliever. Yeah, that, that verse it also says you should wage war against that, that the Ali Al-Qatar. referring to is to the specific ones in that time, because those ones were the ones who were persecuting the Prophet, peace upon him. Again, but and that's an apologist's answer. It's not apologist, that's what scholars say unanimously. No. Because there's some hadith, some uh, ayat in the Quran. For 1400 years, are you aware that Muslim armies marched into Christian lands, so did the Christians justifying, into... justifying their invasions, occupations, enslavements and persecutions with the text of the Quran, which says to wage war against the Alim Al-Kitab? Yeah, but the Christians are the same with the slavery. No, I'll answer my question. Are you aware of that? They, that's the thing Muslims can use the text. I'll ask you again. Are you aware of it? Yeah, I'm not, well, I'm aware that Muslims use the text. Were they wrong to do so? They're wrong to do so. So for 1400 years, Muslim scholars have been getting it wrong. Yeah, but not. Yeah, but they weren't all doing what you're saying they were doing. There were some. Fourteen hundred years. Every Islamic empire, from the Fatimid, the Umayyad, the Abbasid. I mean, name one. The Ottomans, the Seljuks, like whichever wind you, one you want to point to, and ISIS, all invaded Christian lands using the verse about waging war against the Alim Al Kitab as their justification. Were they right or were they wrong? A lot of the empires that you stated, when they were, were conquering, for example, when after they conquered like Saul al-Din, he did he'd not tell the Christians you have to be Muslims. He did That's not, not my down. question. Yeah. So I'll ask my question again. They invaded lands that were Christian. They used the reference in the Quran about waging war against the Alim al-Kitab as the justification. Were they right or were they wrong? I don't know. I, I, you don't I know. I need to do more research on that. And even if they did... No. I mean, do you doubt that they did? I don't know. I don't know. Do you think that they did actions without referencing the Quran? A lot of the empires used the Islamic texts to justify the actions. And a lot of them, what they, they benefit society. So, yeah. for example, you're talking about the Muslims. And when the Catholics invaded Spain, for example... No, they liberated Spain. You say that, but then... The, it example, was a Christian land before the Islamic invasion. Fact. Yeah, but... When the Ottomans were there, okay, the Catholics... The Ottomans were, were not in Spain. In, in, in Andalus, yeah, okay, there's Jews there. There, there were no Ottomans in Andalusia. It was a Fatimid empire. Fatimid, okay, sorry, it was Fatimids. Then. They're Shia, by the way. I'd, I'd, yeah, but what I'm trying to say is, the Jews, after, they wanted to come with the Muslims and escape from the Catholics who invaded Andalus. Okay. No, no, Catholics didn't invade Spain. They liberated Spain from an Islamic occupation. That's your interpretation. It's a fact of history. Spain... Spain, yeah. Spain, 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 Barak, Barak. Yeah. Like, me and you were having a nice conversation. 
please don't allow trolls to jump into this conversation yeah. by giving them your attention. Yeah. Because that's disrespectful to me and I'm your interlocutor. Right. Okay? So please be respectful. I'm not jumping in talking to other people, I'm talking to you. Please do the same. He's just a troll who trolls me every Sunday. But if I try to challenge him in a debate, he just shouts because he's an immature child. What I'm trying to have is a conversation with you. Yeah, great. So let's do that. So please don't give attention to the troll because it just encourages him. So my, my point to you is, my point to you is, I get the impression, Barak, if I pronounce your name correctly. Barak, Barak. I get the impression, Barak, that you're a better man than Mohammed. I, I, do, I genuinely do. That is my impression. You might disagree with it, but I'm just... I'm, I'm just saying that you are, you seem to me a better man than Mohammed. Because he's the, okay, he's the man who told us, for example, um, that we have to respect, uh, that, that, you know, heaven is under our mum's feet, for example. Yeah. That we have to respect our neighbours, for example. Like, was, I'll tell you one story. Wait, probably, you don't need to, I believe you. Yeah, yeah. I believe you, he said that. But he also said, kill those that leave Islam. Yeah, but that was because, okay, let me give you an example why he said that. So Stop imagine, the money. Keep, I'll tell you, ignore him. one second, ignore him, please. Okay, the reason why is because keep keep talking the, to the Muslims, okay, were at war with the, the polytheists because the polytheists were the aggressor towards us. Now imagine I was in the British Army in World War II, I left the British Army and joined the Germans. Am I not a threat to the British Empire and the Queen? Yeah. Okay, and that person has committed treason. Allow me to reply to that because okay. that isn't what Muslims have done for 1400 years. What they have done is that they've killed civilians who have left Islam. And an example of that would be the martyrs of Cordoba. Because there were Muslims that left Islam, became Christians, and then were executed in Cordoba because they left Islam. There's, there's literal translate, literal interpretations by some groups of people of, of the text, literal, but the yeah. interp interpretation that I follow is that the reason why that hadith, which is Sahih, yeah. was you know, narrated is because if he was to leave the Muslim army and then join the polytheists... It wasn't about armies. Yeah, but no, no, that's the point, that's the context. If you were to leave the Muslims, okay, you know all about the Muslims, their hideouts, their secrets, okay, you can go and expose the Muslims to no. the polytheists and then they might come at night and attack... The, the hadith, the, actually, the context is that Muhammad was asked about uh, in what circumstances is is it legitimate to kill another Muslim? Right. And he said that there are three circumstances in which it is legitimate to kill another Muslim. One, they kill without a killing Muslim without a just cause. Two, they commit adultery. Three, they leave the religion of Islam. That's the context of that right. hadith. But there's more it's got of a context to that hadith as well. Yeah. Not just one context, there's more context to that context, yeah. if that makes sense. That's what is, Islam is like an ocean. You don't just rely on a hadith and say, okay, that's the interpretation. You have to look at the context yeah. and say what other hadiths are saying about that, what the scholars yeah. uh, commentary on about the hadith is yeah. as well, if that makes sense. Barak, do you have a, this is your opportunity to ask a Christian a question right. about Christianity. Because it, it strikes me that I, I'm, I'm speaking to a decent human being when I speak to you. I get that impression, right? God alone is your judge. God alone knows your heart. But from my impression of you, you're a decent human being. And you're not wanting the religion of most of the Muslims in this park. You're wanting a different Islam. Because, no, because I've spoke to these Muslims for six years, including the troll behind us, and they do justify killing Christians who have left Islam, who are civilians. They do justify having sex with children. They do justify waging jihad against unbelievers. That's what it, I've uh, experienced yeah, for six it's years. It's so, so focus on me. Ignore the troll. Yeah, I know. Right? I, I know I so know. you're you're obviously you're obviously not wanting that Islam. And I would say that means you're not wanting the Islam of Muhammad. No, no, that's wrong. Because don't forget, we are all ignorant. We are laymen, for yeah. example. Like if I was to just find around Christian and ask them about a specific verse in the Bible, it's like, oh, I have to look it up. Let me research it. I only wish they would. For Most example, of them will try to answer in ignorance. This is what I'm trying to say. A lot of us Muslims, including me myself, we're very ignorant. We don't know our religion properly, so we can't provide the valid answer. Yeah. Hence why some Muslims, unfortunately, go to, you know, shouting and screaming and saying, you know, profanity like some brothers did. See what I mean? For example, That's because, his behavior. Because this is due to our ignorance and due to our love of trying to protect our religion. So I do apologize for the behavior that some Muslims do have, but this is the same do you, behavior. Do you condemn the Muslim sister that said she doesn't condemn paedophilia and she agrees with child marriage? I, I didn't hear the conversation, so I can't... It's on camera. You're I'm asking you a question. Do you agree with child marriage? Yes, yes. Do you agree with I'm child not marriage? Deny it. I'm not going to deny it. Do you agree with child yes. marriage? Yes! Right. That is the problem. I, well, I didn't watch Did you hear her? I, I didn't view, so I can't comment. Okay. I can't say anything about that. Right. So my, my point to you is, bro, I, I, there... Yeah. I do condemn that. No, but did you hear what she said? Okay, fair enough. So my point to you is, we, we've got it on camera, we've got lots of witnesses, right? And, and, and 
I, I actually think that what you did there is an example to Christians who are too quick to condemn what they haven't heard. And I, I wish Christians would do that, right? But what I want to suggest to you, bro, and this is where all the trolls are going to jump in and interrupt us, because I can feel them gathering, right? So we'll have to sort of bring this to a close. Okay. But what I want to suggest to you, bro, is that there is a better way that is open to you. That is the way of our Lord Jesus Christ, where you don't have to try and come up with convoluted arguments to justify killing apostates, come up with justi uh, convoluted arguments to justify not having sex with children or not marrying children. We Christians do not have these problems. And we don't have these problems because we follow Jesus Christ. Now, have you got a Bible, bro? Right. Yeah. Now, my, what I want to comment is, my father, okay, when he was my age, yeah. he, he didn't believe in anything. Yeah. So he decided to research the religions, Christianity, yeah. Hinduism, etc. Islam and he became Muslim. So he done all the researching yeah. and he decided to become Muslim over a Christian. I met a girl today in my church from Saudi Arabia yeah. who uh, rejected Islam and is now a Christian. And the reason why that might be is because in Saudi Arabia they've got a very literal and very harsh interpretation. I also I met before. another girl in my church today who uh, rejected Islam from Iran and is now a Christian. Well, Iran again is Shia dominated and they're very, they're very harsh as well. Saudi Arabia, Sali, Salafi. Salafi. I know they were had the Salafi and I, I don't follow their views because they're very harsh. But I'm yeah. not going to say any comment on that. Anyway, so let's now, get... Now, the point I want to say yeah. is because I, I, I need to go as well now. The reason why I don't accept the Bible is because... And I'm not going to I'm not gonna elaborate. I'm just going to make the point and go. It's because the Bible's got a few contradictions. It's got a few logical things that doesn't make sense. Like the Trinity, exactly. Example, and it's got a few ironic parts in the Bible where, for example, in the Bible it says don't eat pigs, just don't eat pigs, where it says for women to cover up, otherwise they're shaving, they don't, women don't cover their heads up, even though Mary did. That, that's, that, that, that's a poor argument because all you're doing is looking at bad examples and saying those bad examples represent Christianity, not looking at what Christianity teaches. Yeah, but I'm talking about the belief. I'm not talking about people's yeah. actions, I'm talking about the belief. Yeah, exactly, no, but that's the point is that I don't think you know what Christians believe or why we believe what we believe. What you're doing is you're taking second-hand information given to you by your father, and your father clearly didn't understand what he was looking into, because the, the, the conclusions that you've just replied to me with are, are easily refuted. If we were to have a conversation, we could discuss it more yeah. in detail. Well, let's, let's, just, another time. Because just like how you... You thought that you could easily refute me, but I made good arguments about the age of Aisha. But people can make their own judgment about whether it's a good argument. Point. So, you know, I believe I've done a good argument and I didn't, I didn't just dismiss what you said. You know, you, you were very you, civil. Yeah, I gave you a lot of different reasons why yeah. she wasn't six and how she couldn't be six. So, back to my question do you have a Bible? I believe my, I have a Bible at home, yes. You do have a Bible. And I'd like to give you a gift, a different, not a Bible, something else. Just, to, just as a, a thank you for the civil way that you've conducted yourself to show my appreciation. So thank you very much. Yeah. Like I say, you've got these trolls that come around. They're just passionate because you've got. No, they're just trolls. Can you read Arabic? Of course. What? What's that in Arabic? Injil. Oh well, if it's Injil, then you've already got it. So let me give you a different gift. Let me give you a different gift. Can you speak English? Can you speak Maninka? I can speak English. I can speak French. What can you speak English? Here you go, bro. Little gift for you. Have a read of your Bible. Come back another time and bring me your best questions and let's talk about it. Yeah, here's another gift. Give me that as well. I read that as well. All right. But I've got a lot of books as well, Muslim books, yeah. explaining how Jesus is, you know, to have uh, Muhammad in the program. I would love to have that conversation. Yeah, bring him and let's talk. God bless you, Barak. You're a really nice guy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Try not to get that. Okay. Right, guys. Yeah, let's just move away from the noisy trolls. Let's just move away from the troll rooms. Noisy trolls. Oh, I, I just don't talk to the laminator. He owes me money. No, because he owes me money. He owes me money. No, yeah, he still owes me money. Right. So, no, not really. No, no, no I don't, I'm not running from the laminator. Yeah, come on, just keep walking. How are we doing? Yeah, I do want to do the talk. Right. So, let's do a wrap up. Let's do a wrap up. Can I have to hold the microphone like this? Can I have to hold the microphone like this? Okay. Can I have to hold the microphone like this? Okay. How are you going to do it?
So, ladies and gentlemen, what we saw in that debate that we just had was a Muslim trying to say that Sahih al-Bukhari wasn't Sahih. And the reason why Sahih al-Bukhari wasn't Sahih is because he feels the sting of the fact that Sahih al-Bukhari says that Mohammed married a six-year-old child and had sex with a nine-year-old child. And what Who is he God? did is Who he is wanted to distance himself he by that through a convoluted apologetics argument. That's what he did. 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 Shall we talk? Shall we talk? You don't want to talk. But you wanted to burst in and shout in my ear. That's what you did. So don't shout in my ear then. No one is your dimmy. 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 Now, as I was saying, as I was saying, no, 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 I'm going to finish what I was saying. The reality is, is that many Muslims are rightly embarrassed by the example of their prophet and they want to distance themselves from their prophet, just like that Muslim did. But we Christians are not embarrassed by our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to be like Jesus Christ. We want to be like Jesus Christ on earth and follow his example. But what you saw was 40 minutes of a Muslim trying to get away from the example of Muhammad because he was embarrassed by it. Okay, there's, there's too many people shouting. Guys! How old is Mary in the Christian tradition? You're going to be talking about Aisha. May Allah be pleased with her. Tell us how old was Mary. Yeah, two questions. Two questions, bro. I'll try to answer you both of your questions. Please appreciate, I can't. I can't control the people that shout and interrupt. Okay? I, right? I respect. Finally. Okay, so what is a dhimmi? A dhimmi under Sharia law is one who receives a protected status as an alim al kitab or one of the people of the book upon the payment of the jizya, the rate of which is decided by the caliph. So do they get protected? No, from the your Islamic second Islamic question. Islamic. Let me let me let me let me, let me let me deal with both of these questions. Okay, sure. Yeah? We'll take questions, but let, let me deal with each one before you throw out another one. The reality is that for 1400 years we Christians have experienced dimitude and we are unanimous that it is persecution. Truly. That we receive it as a reduction in our legal status to second-class citizenry. Shameful. It is the equivalent of a racial apartheid, but based upon religion. Every Christian that has li lived under dimitude condemns it as the persecution of the church. Next question. Next question. How old was Mary? The next question. I can't. I can't control this. Let me. Let me. He's answering the second question. So I'll try to shout for you. So the answer to your second question is how old was Mary? The Bible does not give an age for Mary. Precisely. However, yeah. however, yeah. the Bible does evidence yeah. that Mary was able to travel independently to her cousin Elizabeth, which demonstrates, and it demonstrates that she was old enough to be pregnant. Both of these mean that she was not a child, Amen. unlike Aisha, Aisha who married 
when she was six years old and was prepubescent and had sex when she was nine years old. And that is the opinion of Sahih Al Bukhari. Right. Next question. Next question. I'm not taking no. I'm not taking questions from him. Any other? Any other question? I don't want to. Right, ladies and gentlemen. From the ground. The reality is, Muslims, your da'i are lying to you about the Christian faith. I challenge you, show me the age of Mary in the Bible. Show me the age of Mary in the Bible. All you have are rhetoric. What's the age of Mary in the Bible? I'm not saying a specific age. What, what? Right, so what were you trying to say? Let's have a conversation, come on, let's have a conversation. Okay.